a defenseman can naturally have a tight gap two ways in particular. First way is to always get up with the play offensively, assuming there's no one behind you, of course, on the other team, so that if the puck switches hands and the other team comes up with it, the white ice is naturally sealed off. The second way is for a D to constantly have his feet moving in the offensive zone, even if it's just in a tight space. So this clip here, forward turns the puck over to the blue player. Because the defenseman had his feet moving in the offensive zone, the gap is naturally tight here. And the gap is naturally tight here, no more than one or two stick lengths away from the puck carrier. Blue team is forced to chip and we come up with the puck. Plays on the half wall in our end zone. White team comes up with the puck. Look at how tight the gap is. One stick length. Weak side D is gapped up tight as well. Forwards are hunting back. Sticks on the ice right in front of us. White team has no room. They have to dump it. And now we're going back for the puck. White team comes up with the puck. Great gap by the strong side D. Stick is down on the puck. Eyeballs to eyeballs. Forwards hunting back hard. Weak side D. Gapped up nice and tight. Ready to defend the oncoming driver. In this case, we get a stick here. Weak side D gets a stick because he's gapped up tight. It's right on time for the forwards who are coming back. And we end up with a shot and a scoring chance with traffic. It starts with a tight gap by both of our D and our forwards coming back hard to the middle of the rink. Neutral zone faceoff, 50-50 puck. White team has it. Naturally tight gap. Weak side D is in good position. Sticks are down on the puck. Forwards are coming back hard. We're taking away time and space. We've got five guys in the picture. We're connected. Great sticks by the defenseman. Simply having your stick down on the puck forces a turnover. Again, five guys in the picture perfectly connected. And now we're on time and we're going on offense. When the opponent has speed, and certainly when they have numbers, we want our defensemen to respect that, but not be intimidated by it. In this particular clip against Belarus, they're the team in red. They have very good speed up front. Watch this clip. Battle off the faceoff. They come up with it. It's very important here to note, this is not a three-on-two. This is a three-on-three three because we have a hunting forward in the picture. D do a great job. Sticks are on the ice. Heads are up, eyeballs to eyeballs. We're not giving up any time and space. And we do an excellent job here with something we call control skating. Not backing in, not crossing over, staying low to the ice, letting the play come to us, maintaining a naturally tight gap. Good stick by the weak side D. Forwards are coming back through the neutral zone. We're on time. And now we have a chance to make a firm play through the neutral zone and go back on offense. When the other team comes up with the puck, does it matter where it is on the rink or how they've come up with it? We need our three forwards on the ice to have the mindset of hunting back hard through the neutral zone to help us get the puck back by our blue line at the latest. This particular clip, we win a draw in the O zone. We get a shot. White team comes up with the puck. Watch our first forward. Hunt the puck carrier. D, have a tight gap. Second and third forwards. Good secondary hunt, we call it, through the middle, through the guts of the rink. With this attitude, all five guys connected, all five guys in the picture, forwards hunting back hard. We now come up with the puck at our blue line and we get a chance to attack together and be in the offensive zone. Five guys working, three forwards hunting, D maintaining a tight gap, and now we're back where we want to be in the O zone. Anytime the other team comes up with the puck in the offensive zone, we need our three forwards on the ice 
to hunt unbelievably hard so we can get that puck back as quickly as possible. We go low to high, we get a shot, rebounds in the corner, we have a pretty good triangle offensively, white team comes up with the puck, they come out the other side. It is the job of our highest forward, our F3, to get across the zone as quickly as possible, hunt, and start our reload. It's the job of our low two forwards to hunt through the middle and continue our reload. And we do a good job here. F3 comes across the zone, good stick, trying to hunt and eliminate the puck carrier. Great job by our strong side D. He sees that our hunting forward is trying to eliminate that puck carrier outside the dots. So he does a good job being at or inside the dot. Outstanding work here. We never want our forward outside and our D outside. That's called two on one the puck. And that's bad hockey. So our high forward reloads, hunt and eliminate. Secondary forwards, our low forwards, Hunt back through the middle. Great layer, great layer, good layer, layers. White team has no room. We have five guys in the picture connected. And we run the white team offside. Good work by all five guys, particularly our high forward getting across, reloading, hunting, and eliminating. D inside the dots and our low forwards providing a secondary hunt through the neutral zone. Connected ice hockey on the hunt. Offensive zone, we're working. We're battling, getting pucks on the net, battling on the inside, competing to try and score a goal. Red team comes up with the puck. Forwards now have to hunt, reload, Get above the puck. We do a great job here. Primary hunter goes to eliminate. Secondary guys are hunting and reloading. D sees our forward coming. And what does he do? Starts to take a step towards the inside. And look, puck comes right to him. Five guys in the picture. We're connected. We hunt together. And now we get to transition together. And in this case, we fire the puck in, and we go for a line change, and we try and get new guys on the ice to do the same thing all over again. We are in a set four check. The white team is trying to stretch us out. They fire a long pass. Our forward jumps it here. Our low forward is hunting through the middle. What's your job? It's to do exactly what you do here. Hunt, eliminate, and in this case, come up with the puck. Fire a good pass to your teammate. Outside delay. And now we are in the offensive zone right where we want to be. Offensive zone. Cut back. Bring the puck to the net. We're on the inside. Red team comes up with the puck. You. Hunt with the thought of eliminating. You two guys provide secondary hunt through the middle of the rink. Defenseman sees that our forward is hunting and eliminating outside the dots. So our D is at or inside the dot. We run them out of room right at our blue line. And now our defenseman can skate into the puck and move it to our secondary hunters and we are going on offense. Two points here. When our forward hunts with the thought of eliminating and he's outside the dot trying to hunt and eliminate, remember we never want the defenseman outside the dot. The second point, we want to try to get the puck back by our blue line at the latest. Sometimes it doesn't work that way and we have to communicate and play hockey. Sweden makes a short little lateral play our forward, our hunting forward's thinking, I can eliminate him, I can eliminate him, I can run him out of room right about here and watch what happens. He makes a good effort, but he can't run him out of room by our blue line. No problem, just keep hunting. And you play the dot. 
That's exactly what happens here. We're in good position defensively, but the puck ends up going back into the neutral zone and we can now forecheck. Good job by our hunting forward and our defensemen playing off each other, not two on one the puck, having really good layers. Offensive zone, we cut back. We get it taken away from us. White makes a breakout pass out the weak side. You've got a decision to make. You are hunting no matter what, but can you hunt and eliminate this guy by our blue line? Probably not. In this case, the D plays it because he's right there. It's so important that our hunting forward and our defensemen communicate with signals and with words. In this case, our D is outside the dot playing the one-on-one, -on -one, no problem. Our forward just needs to be inside the dot. What we care about most is that we're taking away time and space and we never have our primary hunter and our primary strong side defender outside the dot. As long as one guy's outside and one guy is inside, we will be fine. And in this case, the D's outside, takes away time and space, forces a deposit, and our forward is inside. We're coming up with the puck. Now we have a chance to break out. In this clip here, the white team is going to come up with the puck. They fire it weak side. There is no way that our highest forward is going to be able to hunt and eliminate by our blue line. Our defenseman is closer. So again, he plays the one-on-one -on -one outside the dot. Supporting forward comes inside the dot. White team deposits, and we're going back for the puck. U.S. comes up with the puck. They throw it out the weak side. These two players have to read the situation and communicate. In this case, the hunting forward keeps coming. The defenseman is inside the dots. We don't two-on-one the puck. We have good layers. We have five guys in the picture. We're in a good position to defend and eventually break the puck out. If we do a good job reloading in the offensive zone and hunting, a lot of times what will happen is the opposition, as we try and uh, hunt and eliminate, they'll throw the puck out the weak side. And if they do that, no problem at all. We'll just shift. Red team gets the puck. They go D to wing. Here comes our hunting forward. Red team just throws the puck out wide. Look at our defenseman. Good tight gap. Inside the dots. And all we do here is simply shift. Five guys in the picture. Nice tight gap by the D. They take a shot from the outside. Easy save for our goaltender. 